Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson five today, positive and negative reinforcement. So we're going to get more specific with the types of reinforcement and what positive and negative reinforcement really mean. And then we're gonna talk about key points three and four, what primary and secondary reinforcers really are. Uh, here we go. So positive and negative reinforcement. Uh, suppose you want to teach a dog to shake hands. One way would be to give the animal a treat every time it lifts a paw up to you. The treat is a positive reinforcer. Uh, it's something that will increase the likelihood of the behavior. Uh, and in this example, the dog will eventually learn to shake hands to get a reward. So when you're giving something good, is what I like to think of, double G, giving something good is a positive reinforcer. In classical conditioning, extinction is the disappearance of a conditioned response when an unconditioned stimulus no longer follows a conditioned stimulus. So your dog will essentially stop shaking hands when you forget to reward it for the trick. Extinction will occur because reinforcement is withheld, but it will take um, you know a little bit of time. So positive reinforcement occurs when you give something the animal wants after an action. So a treat for the dog is added after the paw is shaken. So that's positive reinforcement. You're giving something good. Negative reinforcement occurs when something unpleasant is taken away. You're taking away something bad. Negative reinforcement. Uh, so an example of this would be to take away a shock collar if they listen. So let's say that your dog is wearing a shock collar. If they agree to shake your paw, then you take that shock collar away. You're taking away something unpleasant. That's negative reinforcement. And this has real consequences in the real world, uh, especially dealing with children. Um, so there's a couple of ways that these that this negative reinforcement can be used. So positive reinforcement, I think, is easier to understand, giving something good. Negative reinforcement, taking away something bad, also increases the likelihood of the behavior, but is a little bit more difficult to understand. So two uses of negative reinforcement that psychologists have studied are escape conditioning and avoidance conditioning. So in escape conditioning, a person's behavior causes an unpleasant event to stop. Uh, you can think of your dog whining and whining and whining to get out of its cage or to get into the bathroom with you. Uh, so consider the case of a child who hates liver and has served it for dinner. She whines about the food and gags while eating it. At this point, her father removes the liver. The whining and gagging behavior has thus been negatively reinforced. Something bad has been taken away. And the child is likely to whine and gag in the future when given an unpleasant meal. They have been, that the, the gagging and the whining has been reinforced to increase in like, it'll be more likely to happen because it has negatively been, re, been negatively reinforced. The bad thing was taken away. So they have escaped this bad thing. Uh, this is escape conditioning because the behavior of the child allowed her to escape the liver meal. Um, similarly, but not quite the same as avoidance conditioning. So this would be an example, like if the child started whining when the father removed the liver from the refrigerator. So the whole idea is that you the, the behavior prevents it from happening in the first place. The escape is to get out of uh, the situation, but avoidance is to stop it from happening. Uh, we would identify this situation as avoidance conditioning. The child avoided the unpleasant consequences by whining early enough. So the reinforcer here is the reduction of the child's disgust, not having to eat the liver. Again, negatively reinforcing this behavior, making it more likely that ch the child will cry and whine and throw a tantrum um, when uh, an unpleasant food is presented to um, that child. So uh, negative reinforcement increases the likelihood of a behavior happening because you're taking away something bad. You are getting rid of uh, an unpleasant stimulus uh, for the subject couple types of reinforcers, primary and secondary now, key points three and four. A primary reinforcer is a stimulus that is naturally rewarding, such as food or water, uh, maybe shelter. This satisfies a biological need, thirst or sleep, 
Uh, these would be primary reinforcers. So these are really what you need to use for like animals, hunger, thirst, sometimes sleep, uh, but mostly hunger uh, and food for uh, training animals. But you can use secondary reinforcers for humans in most situations. Uh, these would be things such as money. So they're rewarded through a link with food or through a link with shelter or through a link with uh, entertainment. So money can get you all those things. So we would re refer to that as a secondary reinforcer. It's not something that's biologically necessary, but it's something good. And it, uh, we know that it's good because we've been conditioned. Almost any stimulus can acquire value and become a secondary reinforcer. Like money is just really pieces of paper or pieces of metal um, in and of themselves. They don't have value. They have value because we say they have value. Uh, we have conditioned or learned or linked the value with these things. Um, so um, this is another type of conditioning, actually, which is kind of ironic. Uh, money is the best example of a secondary reinforcer in human society. Um, we have learned from the very beginning of our being that we can buy things with money we can buy food we can buy material things we can buy experiences um, with money so it is a secondary reinforcer that unlocks uh, a lot of biological needs other examples of secondary reinforcer would be praise maybe from your parents or from uh, someone you respect status maybe you get a degree uh, prestige, maybe people treat you uh, better. All of these are items are associated with a primary reinforcer. They allow you to get more biological needs easier, uh, but they then in and of themselves are not biological needs. You don't need prestige to live. They have acquired value, so they reinforce certain types of behavior when they're used. So um, they uh, will help um, reinforce uh, different uh, behaviors they will help increase the likelihood they in of themselves don't have value we have learned that they have value uh, you have terms in an assignment as usual uh, so if you do have questions as usual please ask but thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you soon